It also involves the menu planning. This is where healing takes place. Do you see the simple notes that was placed on that first page? Now, let me show you how you transition into that deeper lecture now. We are told, now saints, listen to this. In Carl Porter's ministry, right here, we are told that the conflict of the ages, do you guys know what I mean by the conflict of the ages? Let me repeat to you. Come on. Patriots and prophet. Prof no, 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 in order. Oh, wait a second. Do you guys know that these books have a chronological order? Well, I'm about to share with you. There is a chronological order, and we're going to go through the chron chronological order. By the way, the chronological order goes from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Okay? So let's follow the chronological order. Patriots and prophet, prophets and kings, desire of ages, acts of the apostle, and what? Great controversy. In addition to those, that's the conflict of the ages, there's two additional books that the Savior recommend, Daniel and Revelation. He says, these books that I just mentioned, he says, these books contain truths that will prevent us from being deceived in the last days. Did you guys get that? Uh-huh. So, for the devotional period, guess which books I want everyone to focus on? These books right here. Do you know when I go to churches and I ask the question, how many of you have read these books cover to cover? Raise your hand. Maybe one or two people in an entire congregation. Am I making sense to saints? So immediately, the first thing I do, I stop the people from being jack of all, master of none, and I start them with one book at a time. And here's how we do it now. And look now, saints, we have a sample devotion, morning devotion, evening devotion. This is not black and white. You have to follow it exactly as outlined. But we just put something there for the people who are looking for an outline to follow. Start with a word of prayer. Am I making sense there? Okay? And one of the things that we're going to do, and I'll, what I'll do when I come back this afternoon, I'll make sure I bring the appropriate quote for you. We're told that when you pray, how do you pray? Yeah. You got to kneel before holy God. As a matter of fact, do you know that the Savior would prefer that we don't stand when praying? So one of the things that we're going to do from this day forward, we, I'll bring the quote for, for you and let you see the quote, and in that way we'll acknowledge that we're in the presence of a holy God. Because if you look, there have been numerous times that I prayed myself and didn't kneel before holy God, which is wrong, period. No excuses. Amen? We make no excuses for those situations. Yes, my dear. Oh, preacher, you hit it on the head. The Lord is not an unreasonable God. Amen? For individuals who can't go down, you stay where you're at. Just make sure that mentally in your mind you understand the principle. Does that make sense there? And now, listen to this now, saints. Sometimes it's not conducive for you to kneel. So guess what? You stand wherever you're at. Sometimes it might be best that you just sit. But when the opportunity is available, you need to bend those knees and acknowledge that in the presence of a holy God. Yes, Brother Huey. And now, saints, listen now. I don't want to draw this out because I have limited time and I have to knock this out. Amen? Go ahead, Brother Huey. I, I can't hear you. Oh, blessings. We'll deal with that when we're teaching prophetic guidance this afternoon. Amen? Let, let's continue here. Follow the format here for me, please, saints. And saints, listen, if you want to get into discussion, you can get into discussion after we're finished, but I need to go through this information. Amen? Amen? Start with a word of prayer. Sing a few hymns. And you remember what Sister Sarah was talking about, the different type of music and so forth. The reason why we say hymns, don't get these type of music that's just going to get you all railed up where you can't sit down, as Sarah said, which is absolutely awesome, where you can't pray with the music in the background. Okay? So keep that in mind. Hymns. Read a devotional book. And the devotional book, we recommend, has a scripture at the top, look the scripture up yourself, and then you read the devotional thought. My recommendation for devotional book, get the devotional book that, were, that are excerpts from Sister White's writing. Before you read any other author, please stick with those books. And the reason being, 
a lot of time you'll be fine that many errors are taught during, during devotional thoughts. Some of the devotional thoughts are, in, are um, incorrect and you want to make sure that we're in sync as we go all the way through. That's your basic format from the beginning. And then you go down now, you see the conflict of the ages listed 1 through 5, Daniel and Revelation 1 and 2. Start with patriots and prophet first. And when you start with patriots and prophet, now saints, here's how you study it, okay? At the beginning of each chapter, not all chapter has that, but at the beginning of each chapter, it's going to list the scriptures where it's taken from. Here's what you do. Read the scriptures first, and then you read the story. And you want to know something, saints? When I did that, here's what happened in my mind. My mind actually formed a parallel line. I could be talking to you. I'll slide over on inspiration, slide back over on the Bible, and I can just go back and forth, back and forth. I can stay in one, go all the way down. You know, you have the ability to distinguish between the Bible and inspiration if you read them together. Am I making sense, these saints? And it's going to take you a little longer, but you'll get thorough understanding of understanding how it works. And then finally, you close with a word of prayer. Does that make sense? Your heaviest study is done in the morning. Then for the evening worship, your morning worship, at least a thoughtful hour. Your evening worship, at least 30 minutes, preferably more if you can, but at least 30 minutes. Start with a word of prayer. Sing a few hymns again. Do your lesson study. Amen? Your lesson study. And then you, and saints, let me warn you now. There's some folks that they say, look, I'm not interested in doing any lesson study. Because they may not like who wrote the lesson study. Okay? For those individuals, guess what I do? I have them study the health message. Am I making sense to the saints? You just got to work with the saints then in those situations. Some people have very strong um, positions in terms of whether or not they'll do the lesson study or not. For those who have those strong positions, you just go ahead and, put the, and have them start the health message. And it works the same way again. Pathways and Ministry Healing is the same book. Counselors and Diets and Food, Counselors and Health, Temperance. And you see it says Health Books, Volume 5, where Number 5 is Health Books. That's like your Foods Encyclopedia, your Herb Books, and all health-related materials. You can also incorporate those as you're studying to preserve the body of Christ. Am I making sense to you? Okay? Your body's the temple of God. And as you study the message to impart life to, the, to, to your body, you can actually be a better steward to take care of Jesus' body. And then finally, you close with a word of prayer. Am I making sense to you, saints? Amen. Do you see how we're able to link that in on the trust in God? Do you see how we link the first page, uh, number nine with number 11? How many of you guys saw the link? Good. Do you see at the bottom of 11 where it says herbal recommendation and life's herbal remedies and life, um, lifestyle recommendation? At that bottom, here's what you're going to do. When you're finished, that's going to be the last thing you do. And the way that's done, you're going to use your medicinal plant book, your herbal book, and your foods encyclopedia, and that's where you make your recommendation. Did you guys get that? Did you guys get that? So, you're using your foods book and your plant book, and that's where the herbal recommendations come from. And then the saints say, well, you know what I mean? Uh, can I get some more instructions? Amen. Blessings. Okay? Does that make sense, saints? Meaning that if they, they say they want more instructions, you suggest to them that they should increase their library. And when I work with individuals, I want to tell you a principle that I teach. You have two types of books. You have soft cover and hard cover. I always let people know that soft cover is for sharing, hard cover is for library. Am I making sense to you? You know, I, uh, does that make sense, Sister Vanessa? Amen. So hard cover is for what? Library. library. Soft cover is for sharing. Things that are soft cover, I'm reading. Sister Evan said, "Brother, that's a rather nice book." Sister Evan, blessed be the name of the Lord. But your hardcover, that stays in the library at home. And you know what I do? Very seldom would you catch me writing in my books. Very seldom would you ever catch me writing in my books. You know why? Boom. I put it right in the mind. I don't write. Very minimal. 
once in a blue moon, I may write in a book, but psh, let me tell you something. Guys, my books are so precious, I don't like the end bend, I don't like the ear curl, and when you, when you come to my home, if you guys ever see, you should see my library, Shh, clean. My books are properly positioned, turn in the proper position, just lined up, flush, flush, you know? And sometimes friends come over and you see the kids them want to just handle the books. I'm like, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. You, you, you know, because sometimes parents don't teach their kids how to handle books properly. You, you, you know, amen. Amen. Don't, don't, don't rough my books up. And then, you know what I don't like people doing? They take your book and like, oh, blessings, please. Don't spread my books like that. You, you understand? Don't spread them. No, no. Just like that. Amen. I don't like dog ears. I don't like, don't mishandle my jewels. Okay. Don't mishandle. As a matter of fact, the team will tell you that I don't like them packing my books. So that's why if you ever wonder why everybody else leave my stuff out, because there's a certain order that my books are packed. And when I come, it has to be packed a certain way for minimal damage, if any. Okay? When I handle my books, you see when I open it up, I go one side first, one side there, and then I put it flat, and then you see I put a couple leaves that way, the leaves that way. I take my time. When folks see me handle my books, they say, uh-huh, books are precious to this guy. And as a result, you increase the value of your books. Amen? Amen. Does that make sense, saints? Now, let me go to the most critical part of menu planning. This section right here, this is the disease reversal area. This is awesome if you catch this. The best thing to do when you're dealing with the schedule First thing to set is the meal. From the meal, you can back up and go forward, okay? So I'm going to go to breakfast. Sister Evans. No, I'm not going to use you. No, I know. <laughs> Sister Vanessa. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sister Vanessa, I'm sorry. I know who I'm going to use. Sister Kerr. How are you, Sister Kerr? I am fine. Amen. Sister Kerr, what time do you normally have breakfast? Okay, wait, okay, let, let me go. Sister Vanessa, what time do you normally have breakfast? <laughs> Around 8? Okay, good, good, good. And is that at home? At home. At home, okay. What time do you have to be at work? Okay, amen, that, amen. So around 8 is when you normally have breakfast, right? What time do you normally have lunch? Around 1. Around 1, 1.30, okay. Let me ask you another question now. Huh? It depends, around 1, 1 Let me ask you another question. Uh, what church do you go to? Kingsborough. Kingsborough. At Kingsborough, what time do you get out of church on Sabbath? Not 1 30. What time? 2, 2 30. 2, 2 30. Okay, and let me ask you another question now. When you get out at 2, 2 30, do you go home and eat or do you eat at church? Eat at church. So you bring your food with you at church? Yes. Okay. Did you guys see what I just did? Basically, I'm trying to get an idea of the days of the week, which day is the most difficult day for her. The most difficult day is what I have to plan the meal around because then all the other days will fall in place. Am I making sense to you? Another thing I'm working with, with Sister Vanessa, I'm looking at her spacing. Her spacing is not adequate because how much time needs to be between each meal, saints? Five, six, or more. Minimum five, six, or more between each meal. After that last item hit your mouth, you need to give it five hours before you put something else in. Am I making sense here? Now, because I know that Sister Vanessa is at home, guess what I'm going to do with Sister Vanessa? Breakfast, seven to eight. Sister Vanessa, is there anything that would prevent you from eating breakfast seven to eight in the morning? Amen. So guess what time for Sister Vanessa? 7 to 8 for breakfast. So just go ahead and write that in for me, please, Sister Vanessa. Okay, that is the window I'm giving Sister Vanessa. What's the window I'm giving her? 7 to 8. But her target time, it says there should be a specified time. The target time, I'm going to come where? Right in the middle, 7.30. So target time, 
7.30, she can come 30 minutes before or 30 minutes after. If Sister 